Hello there, everyone! My name is Oversoul, this is Oversoul Gaming, and welcome back to Danganronpa! Alright, Sakura is dead, and Hina seems to think that it was either Byakuya, Toko, or Hiro that done did it. Now, we know for a fact that it wasn't Makoto or Kyoko, because we're playing as Makoto, so we know if he did it. And Kyoko was with us when it happened, so obviously it wasn't her. Now, Hina could have also done it, but that, just, like, Sakura was like her best friend, so that wouldn't make any goddamn sense, right? So, who done did it? I guess we'll find out soon. Gotta find the rest of them clues, though. Alright, let's talk to everyone. What? What do you want? You're bothering me. Go away. He's not even trying to hide how much he despises me. I'd better go before he crushes my soul completely. Yeah, you're welcome for the gifts, by the way, dick. However... But for Sakura to have been killed... Yeah, she's not the type who would go down without a fight. It's true. And she certainly didn't, I would say. She was the ultimate martial artist, strong in body, mind, and spirit. So how was the killer able to get the upper hand on her? I wonder, did someone get the upper hand? They must have taken her by surprise, right? Certainly. Certainly. They would have needed to if they were expected to stand any chance against her. Let's see, what else am I missing? The clock can't be useful, right? Probably a coin behind it, though. It's around 1 o'clock right now. According to the Monokuma file, Sakura died around 12 noon. So roughly an hour ago. Was that when Kyoko and I were moving Alter Ego? Oh, that's right, there was a point where we were hooking up Alter Ego that Kyoko wasn't there. She was there when we got back out of the bathroom, though, and we weren't in there very long, so... Yeah. Um, I thought the magazine rack was important, but I guess not. Okay, I think I've seen every- oh, I gotta talk to Hina. What the heck? We already know who did it! Really Byakuya and Toko were Hiro. It had to be one of them. Well, slow down. Because you said that last time, too. You were pretty sure Hiro was guilty last time, too, and you were wrong. So, just, just slow down. B me doth thinks the lady protests too much. They couldn't stand the sight of her. You agree with me, don't you, Lakoto? Um, well, I don't want to say anything for sure without finding out more. Then let me help you find out more. You see, Sakura asked all three of them to meet with her. You know where? Right here in the rec room. What? After I went to the nurse's office this morning, Sakura and I both left together, right? Well, eventually she went off on her own. But when I saw her again after that, she told me... She said she'd left a note for each of them. She asked them to meet her in the rec room by noon. By noon? The Monokuma file said she died right around then. telling you the truth. I heard it right from Sakura herself. And I tried to stop her. But she wouldn't listen. She said not to worry, that she just wanted to talk to them. And this is what happened. If I'd stopped her by force, even, this never would have happened. Hina. It's impossible not to have regrets, I know. But the fact that she had asked those three to meet with her, and she asked them to come to the rec room at noon, the same time and place she ended up dying? It might be good to confirm what I just heard with the three of them directly. Alright, Byakuya, you first. What? What do you want? You're bothering me! Um, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. Hmm. Make it quick. Is it true that Sakura asked you to meet her here in the rec room? <laughs> so you found out. Interesting. Then it's true? <laughs> I did receive a note to that effect, yes. But what fool would I... But what fool would do what it said and risk being killed by that monster? So you didn't go see her? <laughs> of course not. I ripped the note into shreds and threw it away. I haven't seen Sakura today at all. The Accuus says he didn't go see her. Is that the truth? Well, until I can prove otherwise, I have no choice but to accept it as fact. Come on. If you're all finished, please remove yourself from my sight. Okay, thanks. Alright. Listen. Well, Makoto, have you finished with your general investigation? Yeah, I think so, for the most part. 
so then. Then you should probably go talk with people now. I'm on guard duty, so I can't leave. Listen to Which me. Which is why I've decided you'll go in my place. She's decided? She's gotten a lot more pushy since we had our issue. But she's right. I do have to go talk to the others. Sakura wanted to meet with two other people. I need to hear what they have to say. Alright, let's go find out where the hell they are. Um... Where the hell are they? They must just be right outside the door then, because they're not anywhere on the map. Those other two probably went back to their rooms. Oh, that's where they are. Okay. Fine. Alright. Whose room is whose over here? Oh, okay, here we go. Toko's is the fourth one on the right. And Heroes is further down the hall. The last one on the second to last on the right. Then around the corner. Okay. Two, three, four. I pressed the doorbell. And after a few seconds. Hmm? Who's there? Ah, the most negative aura I've ever felt. An aura of total decay. Well, what do you want? So you're back to normal. Genocide Jack isn't around anymore. Don't even say her name. It makes me sick to my stomach. I was in such a good mood, too. She didn't look like she was in a good mood. Hey, I was hoping to talk to you about something. Is now a bad time? <laughs> Obviously annoyed, Toko slithered out into the hall. <laughs> slithered, he said slithered. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What do you want? You said you wanted to talk to me about something? I wanted to talk about the fact that Sakura had asked to meet with you. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Byakuya already told me she had asked to meet with him. What? She wanted to meet with Master too? I just said two, didn't I? I guess now it's totally obvious, huh? Yeah, pretty much. So, uh, can you tell me about it? I admit, I did get the note. But, but I didn't go see her. I was so scared, so I couldn't bring myself to go. Hmm, Toko claims she didn't go see her, but... Can I really believe her? Well, until I can prove otherwise, I have no choice but to accept it as fact. <laughs> Is that good enough? Then I'm going back to my room. With that, Toko quiet, quickly retreated into her room. Alright then. Oh, hero! You home? You know? What's up, Makoto? Did you need something? <laughs> yeah, actually, I just wanted to check something. It's about how Sakura wanted to meet with you. <laughs> How'd you know about that? Could it be? Uh, did you maybe gaze into my soul? Have your special abilities awakened in you? Uh, um... B but I'm not the only one she wanted to meet with. Ogre told me herself that she asked Byakuya and Toko to come too. What? When did Sakura tell you that? What? Uh, uh, uh well... Uh, um... When she asked me to meet with her, of course. But didn't she write you a note? <sighs> yeah, uh, a note. She, uh... How about that? She gave it to me in person, and she happened to mention the others, like, in passing. I gotta be honest, this is super suspicious. So then, you went and met with Sakura. You got it all wrong! N no way! I, I totally didn't! Why would I ever do that? Yeah, definitely suspicious. At least, at least one of them is lying. At least one of them went to see her. The last time I saw Ogre was when Hina got hurt, and I took her to the nurse's office. Don't look at I me. haven't seen her since then. While I'm here, could you show me the note she gave you? Uh, oh, um, um, do I still have it? Let's see. Hiro was feeling around in his pockets. Hey, uh, come sorry, on. looks like I don't have it anymore. 
With a big, goofy smile on his face, he pulled his hands back out of his pockets. But when he did, I saw something flutter to the ground. Something had fallen out of Hero's pocket. Huh? Huh? Ugh! Ah! What? Quick as the wind, Hero snatched it back up again and shoved it back into his pocket. Hey, come on. <laughs> Sorry, just a bit of trash. I forgot to throw out. Trash? What? What? Uh, what? Anyway, I can't deny that Ogre asked me to meet, asked to meet with me, but I never went. So well, if you'll excuse me. Uh, before waiting for a reply, Hero quickly slipped back into his room. <laughs> Hero said that was just trash, but there's no way that's all there was to it. Yeah, because it looks exactly like the same candy wrapper on the floor of the rec room next to Sakura's dead body. Okay, so I've heard from Toko and Hiro, um, what next? I definitely have to look at the actual crime scene again, but on top of that, maybe I should find out more about the protein can we found on the floor of the rec room. I'm sure it must have come from the chem lab. So where should I start? The chem lab, of course, we haven't been there yet, so... To the chemistry lab! Shandidibam! Oh, here's the stairs to the fifth floor. And as soon as someone else gets executed, we'll get to go up there. That's also where the last murder and trial will take place, too. We're getting close. We're almost to the end. What? Makoto, did you have your eye on the chem lab, too? And by the way, since we're getting closer to the end, expect to start getting just fucking smacked in the face left and right with plot twists over the... Like, after this next trial, a lot of stuff is going to start coming to a head. And it's gonna be like zip, zow, waboom, bang, shaboom, you know, like a Hanna Barbera cartoon. It's gonna be nuts, so I hope you're ready. Anyways, <clears throat> Makoto, did you have your eye on the chem lab too? Just make sure you don't get in my way. Yeah, I got it. I think what you meant to say was, yes, sir, I understand. No, fuck you, I said what I said. You don't deserve respect. Respect is given, or er, earned, not given, you pretentious monkey fart. All right. <laughs> this isn't my first time seeing the shelf, but I just can't get over how big it is. I should probably take a closer look at it. It looks like three shelves have been connected together to make one giant shelf. But more important right now, what's that powder that's been spilled in front of it? I have to be careful not to step in it. Looks like someone else already did. These are footprints? And they're only in front of the left shelf. Hmm. How do these footprints relate to the scene as a whole? We may need to sketch out the floor plan. By we, do you mean me? Hmm. How kind of you to offer. With an insufferable smirk, he handed me a piece of paper and a pen. What? Well, let's go. Chop, chop. Okay. So I got to work, and before long, I'd drawn up a sketch of the room. Um, so how's this? Not bad. For you, I mean. For me? I see. So, when you look at it like this, interesting. It would appear that whoever left these footprints only had business at the leftmost shelf. You needed me to draw you a goddamn map to figure that out? You could see that with your own eyes. They came in, went straight to that shelf, did whatever they had to do, and then left. That's what the footprints tell me. I see. These footprints must be... It's certainly Makoto. possible. Are they yours? No! What? Okay, then let me see your shoes and I'll confirm their size for myself. I couldn't think of a reason not to, so I quietly did what Miyakuya said. Hmm. I see. Your feet appear do appear to be too big. Unfortunately, I must admit these are not your footprints. Unfortunately, do you want to see me die? Hmm. But with how clear these prints are, it should be quite easy to determine who they do belong to. Then these prints are a really valuable clue. Yeah, imagine that. Footprints are a clue. Oh, mm, if that isn't something. There's handprints in the locker room, too. This one, this out of all of the murders so far, this one is probably the one that is actually, like, the most, um... This is the one that is the most, like, a traditional murder mystery you know, like, this one is very, um, elaborately set up, but very simply executed. And on top of that, the, the, the twist in this one 
is one that you will probably never see coming, and I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna give it to you. I'm not gonna give you a hint. I'm not gonna, you know, you're just gonna have to, you figure this one out for yourself. Because listen here, listen here. I know you're watching Mythos, and the last one you figured out verbatim what happened. And either you're just, like, really good at this shit, or I gave way too many hints. So I ain't given a single goddamn hint for this one. And I, I'm gonna see if you can figure it out again. I challenge you to figure this one out. Alright. <laughs> There's a broken bottle in front of the shelf. Is this where all the powder came from? It looks like the bottle had a label on it. Chem C4. Hmm. Would you like to hear something interesting? I was on the fourth floor this morning checking things out, and at that point, this room wasn't like this. Then this powder must have been spilled. So in other words... That's right, it could have only have been around the time of the incident. If that really is when it happened, it must be related to the case somehow. Alright. Let's see, what's on this shelf? On shelf A, there are all kinds of dietary supplements and different medicines. The protein drink we found in the rec room probably came from this shelf. All the containers on this shelf are labeled with the letter A and a number. So I guess I can consider this part of the shelving in unit section A. Huh? But wait! There's one bottle here that's labeled Chem C9. Could someone have put it here on accident? So there's a poison on the vitamin shelf. Interesting. So on this shelf is... It looks like a bunch of chemicals that I have no idea what they are. Hmm. They're uh, reagents. Put simply, they're used in experiments to bring about a chemical reaction. How have you lived in such ignorance for so long? It must truly be bliss. Isn't that kind of harsh? What? What? You think studying science and mathematics has no practical application in the real world? That's fine. The world's full. The world... The words of a lifelong loser, which I suppose suits you well. I didn't even say that. Anyway, that doesn't matter right now. I need to focus on the shelf. All the containers on this shelf are labored with the letter B in a number. So I guess I can consider this part of the shelving unit section B, as if the big old fucking B on the shelf wasn't dead giveaway. Hmm, I don't see anything out of the ordinary here. In which case, I don't think I have to worry about too much about this shelf. On this shelf is... One look and I can tell it's nothing but dangerous chemicals. These look like poisons and other powerful chemicals. All the containers on this shelf are labeled with the letter C in a number. So I guess I can consider this part of the shelving unit section C. I should try to find out more about this shelving unit. It looks like it's split into three sections. Section A has dietary supplements, Section B has reagents, and Section C has lethal chemicals. Sakura must have gotten the protein powder from Section A. But what concerns me is that in Section A, there was a bottle with a label from Section C. What was a bottle of poison from Section C doing in Section A? There's definitely something going on there. Hmm. Uh, I guess I haven't looked at the actual powder itself. There's a bunch of yellow powder scattered on the floor. I'd better not leave a footprint. Yeah, yeah, I did that already. I should probably take a good hard look at that powder. There's a, uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's also the remains of a broken bottle. It looks like the bottle was labeled Chem C4. Also, it looks like someone left footprints in the powder. Based on the positioning of the prints, whoever it was only went to the left side of the shelf. According to Byakua, the powder would have had to have been spilled right around the time of the incident. That's all I can tell for now. Footprints in the powder has been added to the truth bullets of your handbook. I've already taken a good look at the chem lab. Maybe I should take another look around the crime scene. One more time. Yeah, 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 yeah! Gonna take another look at the crime scene. Alright. I'm not that excited. Wait, wait, I'm on the wrong floor. It's on the third floor. Right? That's right. Rec room's on the third floor. It's crazy that the murder didn't take place on the fourth floor, but the fourth floor is still important to this one because that's where the chem lab is, so... 
Hey. So, Makoto, how's your investigation going? I told Kyoko what Toko and Hiro had told me. I see. I see. So along with Byakua, they're both claiming they didn't go see her. But it's all too convenient. Someone must be lying. Yeah, I mean, someone had to have bashed her in the back of the head with that bottle. Yeah, someone's lying. Anyway... Well, I've made some progress of my own. Sakura's body, the shelf of magazines, and the Monokuma bottles. These three things have revealed new clues. You do well to look them over one more time. I knew there was more to the magazines. That's why I kept trying to look at it. I forgot it wasn't until now. Kyoko said the magazine shelf was hiding a clue of some kind. Hmm, clue, clue. Blue's gonna do, we can too. Huh? The magazine is upside down. Did someone put it back that way on accident? Hey. If something catches your eye, it's important for you to explore that in detail, don't you think? Yeah, you're right. I picked up the inverted magazine and flipped through it. Th this is... One of the pages near the center of the magazine had a, a word had been written in bloody letters. Bold bloody letters. And it said Toko. Could this be... A dying message? Correct. Just like with Leon? That seems almost too convenient, don't you think? That'd be t way too easy for this far in the game. Then it would appear you found it. Kyoko, is this... So... It is indeed a dying message. Someone used their finger to write it. A dying message. However... But just to be clear, I'm not the one who put it back upside down. It was already like that when I found it a little while ago. I made sure to put it back exactly as I found it for the benefit of others who might come looking. Um... Hey, is that... That says Toko, right? Y yeah it looks like it. What the heck? Then she's the killer, right? W well, it hasn't been confirmed yet. Uh, it's settled! You. She's the killer for sure! That's conclusive evidence, right? We can use it to corner the killer! I can see why you would think that, but... It just seems too easy. If anything, it makes me that much more suspicious. Alright, the bottles. I mentioned it before already, but now I think Makoto's gonna notice that there's actually more than one bottle unaccounted for. See, this bottle, this shelf had five bottles on it. As you can see, there's two empty spaces. There's one shattered on the floor, so where the hell's the other one? Something new, something new. Hey. So, did you figure it out? There's a hidden correlation between all the bottles. Pay attention and you're sure to find it. They're chess pieces. I know that much. Um... Sorry, Kyoko. Me stupid. Me not know answer. Please tell answer, pretty lady. Me too dumb for to think. Eh. So... I don't mind guiding you toward clues, but giving you my conclusion isn't a good idea. Each person needs to come to their own conclusion so that everyone can have confidence in the outcome. And it's not just because you don't trust me, right? No answer? <laughs> I do trust you, to a degree. Otherwise, I wouldn't have told you anything to begin with. Only to a degree? Hey. Actually, there's one other thing about the Monokuma bottles that's bothering me. I'd like to do an experiment to confirm it. You don't mind helping me, right? An experiment? Anyway... Can you gather up all the pieces of the broken Monokuma bottle? Try to get the smaller pieces, too. Huh? Are you sure it's okay to mess with the crime scene like that? That doesn't matter. I've already done a thorough investigation, so it's fine. And that obnoxious Biakua is not here, so... So then... Anyway, I need to get something from the chem lab. While I'm gone, try to gather up all the glass. With that, Kyoko left the room. I really don't know what this is about, but... What choice do I have? I'd better just do it. I took the broom and dustpan and got to work collecting all the broken bottle pieces. And just as I finished up... Sorry to keep you waiting. So then... Is everything ready? Then let's get uh, to work. So what kind of experiment are we doing? In other words... I got a scale from the chem lab. We're going to use it to compare weights. Compare the weights of what? <clears throat> the pieces of glass you collected, and one of the Monokuma bottles that's still intact. Why do you want to do that? That's the point of the experiment. It'll make sense when we're done. 
Listen. First, let's compare the weight of the, of the normal Monokuma bottles. Two of them. It's ba it's balanced. In other words... Which means each Monokuma bottle weighs about the same. Which makes sense. Although the, the bishop one should technically weigh a little bit more, because I think there's more mass to the bishop piece than the pawn. But otherwise they're the same, yeah. The Monokuma figures inside are basically the same, and nothing else could really affect the weight. So then... Now here comes the important part. Put all the pieces you picked up on one side of the scale. Now what might we expect to see? Well, a normal assumption would be either they'll balance out or the pieces I collected will be lighter. I did my best to get them all, but there's a chance I could have missed some here and there. So then... Okay, then let's give it a try. Huh? The broken pieces are heavier? H how is that possible? I knew it. Just as I thought. What? In other words... The results of our experiment in the correlation between each of the bottles. Put it all together. Hey. And I believe you will arrive at one very persuasive conclusion. She was bashed with two bottles, but one of the chess pieces are missing. So what do you think? It's all on you. Alright. Now, one more bottle- uh, body- uh, okay. According to Kyoko, there's still something to be discovered from Sakura's body. Just a second. Just staring off into space isn't going to help you figure anything out. Well, well yeah, I know, but... Hey. Don't you think you might need to actually examine the body? Whew. There's no getting around it. Unlike me, Kyoko didn't recoil at the thought of touching a dead body. She was completely unemotional. It's the kind of thing I've grown perversely used to. Although there are still some times... I can't believe how calm you are. No matter how many times I see a dead body, I can't get used to it. It's true. It's... that's totally normal. Then how can you... So... I imagine it's because I've had plenty of opportunities to touch dead bodies in the past. What? Sorry. Never mind. Hey. More importantly, look here. Her shoes? Correct. You see that yellow powder on her instep? Yeah, it really stands out. I see. That powder is clue number one. Yellow powder has been added to the truth bullets. Hey. Next is the wound to her head. Look carefully. It's true. Actually, even telling you that, it's incredibly difficult to spot, so let me just explain. It would seem... It would appear that she didn't suffer a single blow, but instead received two blows to the head. Two blows? Indeed. Interesting, wouldn't you say? And there's one more interesting thing. Correct. Both of her hands were spotless. There's absolutely no trace of blood on either one. It's true. So that's what I learned from examining her body in detail. I can't believe she was able to learn all that just by looking at her body. I don't think anyone but Kyoko could have pulled that off. Oh, shit! You know what that means. <laughs> he rubs hands together maliciously. Whoops! He had caught me sleeping! Your investigation was just so boring, I couldn't stay awake! Should I do it? Is it okay? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Okay, then let's begin the class trial! You know where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon! It's already time, but the mystery of the locked room is still only half solved. At this point, whatever happens will have to happen at the class trial. No, not whatever happens. I have to make something happen. Uh, gulp? God, the door's so intimidating. Ooh, gives me goosebumps every time. Monokuma made his announcement, and everyone began to meet up at one after another. And then... <laughs> the ultimate martial artist! A locked room murder mystery! What? What the... <laughs> oh, I've just recently discovered the power of emoticons! Like, no matter how awful something is, if you toss it a smiley face, it turns positive. Yes, indeed. For example, 
<laughs> You're at a picnic and you find a dead body. Ah! <sighs> that this is just plain creepy. Well, and how about the reverse? Phew. No matter how great something is, if you put in a sad face, it makes it look super negative. Yes, indeed. For example, hmm. do you have a hundred friends? He's right. That does make it seem sad. I can't wait. I can't wait. Now then, please get on the elevator. <sighs> I'll see you all down there. <laughs> oh, what the hell was that? That that was for the audience. <sighs> I don't get it. Just the worst. I don't get you guys. How can you act so casual after murdering someone? D don't look I, at me. I, I don't think I'm acting casual. Don't be me. Er, I mean, I didn't murder anyone. <gasps> yeah, what I'm still completely innocent. How dare you call me a murderer? Well, <laughs> I mean, you technically are. Alternate personality or not, it's still your body when Genocide Jack kills people. What the heck? Whatever. Hmm. Either way, the truth will be revealed soon enough. Because there can be no doubt, one of us is the culprit. The killer. The one that murdered Sakura. She was stronger than anyone I know. And yet, someone killed her. And that person is here? That person is one of us? D don't look at me! I said it before and I'll say it again. It wasn't me! The culprit is one of us. Make no mistake about that. Only because I didn't do it! How many times do I have to tell you? What the heck? How can you just stand there and say you didn't do it, even without breaking a sweat? Hey. Standing around here isn't going to do any good. Let's get going. I agree. It's that time. Come on, it's time to put an end to this. I made my way toward the elevator, but with each step I took, I felt like I was moving further and further away from my goal. I could feel a chilling fear running through me, trying to make me rot from the inside out. No matter how many times I go through this, it never gets any easier. We climbed into our steel prison in total silence. We watched the doors close, and felt it begin its sinister descent. The elevator lowered, uttering its all-too-familiar clunking sounds. It fell lower and lower. God, I love how they always give you this overhead view to really slam home how many people are dead at this point. Like, look at how small this group looks now. Holy shit. And as suddenly, as always... The ride was over. The doors opened once again. Hmm. hmm, just the six of you, huh? Really? That's so few. You must be so lonely. You say that like it's not your fault. We're all that's left. <laughs> I wonder, will the class trial end with one less classmate again? Or... <laughs> will your school life come to an end completely? Now then. Now then. Are we ready to begin? You know the drill! Find your assigned seats! And so the curtain opened for the fourth time. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. Defense. A deadly faith. A deadly class trial! Bum bum bum. Well, you know the drill, folks! We're gonna end this episode here. But, uh, don't worry, because we will, uh, come back to it. Okay, so hold on, I gotta see. I got cool and composed. Man, it's good. Steadies your aim a little. Effective during non-stop debate in the hangman's game. Cool, yeah, I'll take that. Alright, I do want to look here real quick before we end at what my, um, skills are that I have set, so I can see if any of them are affecting the bullet. So, Lost in Thought increases the time limit for each phase. Cool and composed steadies your aim. Um... Neural liberation, the focus gauge decreases slowly during concentration and fever time. Oh, I forgot about the focus gauge. I haven't used that at all. It's not been necessary, though. 
Melodist voice increases the damage to an opponent during BTB. Vocabulary increases bullet capacity effective during BTB. Um, no. None of these should be affecting how many bullets I get during the debates. Huh. Weird. Alright, well, anyways, like I said, you know the drill. That'll be the end for this episode. That'll give you time to ponder the clues in which you have received. Yes. And, um, then, once you are, uh, you know, once you're ready for the next episode, I'll see you there, and we will begin the next class trial. So anyways, with all the clues that we've gathered so far, let me know your theories in the comments down below on who done did it and how they done went and done it in this murder mystery. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, remember to click that like button. And as always, I will catch you possibly on another day, definitely at another time, and likely in another video. Okay, goodbye!